So our presentation is discussing the role of non-human elements uh, in two of the short stories which we have covered this year. And so I'm Morris Record, uh, presenting along with Sam Ryder. So the first thing that we want to look at is really understanding what a non-human element is. And for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to be considering things such as inhumane characteristics or physical man-made objects. And so we'll see further examples of that as we go along in this presentation. Uh, but that's going to be a general premise which we can use. And so throughout the um, duration of this presentation, we're going to be looking at two stories. The Red Convertible from Louise Erdrich's Love Medicine and Reeling for the Empire in Karen Russell's Vampires in the Lemon Grove. And so what we're really looking to do is to kind of compare and contrast these different authors, what's their writing style like, and how, more importantly, how do they utilize non-human elements in similar or different ways? And so how can we see their utilization of non-human elements vary uh, as we look book from book? Uh, and so another really important thing to understand is that these books are centered around different themes, right? So in Love Medicine and Red Convertible, we see ideas such as family, community, home. Whereas in Vampires in the Lemon Grove and by Karen Russell and more specifically Reeling for the Empire, we see some things such as identity or the coming of age and some of the other short stories in the collection. And we often see Karen Russell using the supernatural to kind of describe the reality which we face and some of the bigger motifs. But we still see some level of convergence in the use of non-human elements despite these differences, which is really interesting, and we'll go further into that later on. The other thing to note is that they also have very different settings. So kind of going based on what was discussed before about how Karen Russell utilizes the supernatural, Louise Erdrich tends to stay in the very realistic setting. Uh, in Love Medicine, the setting is a very real realistic Indian reservation. And so then in Vampires in the Lemon Grove, we see that Karen Russell ta uh, puts us in the place of a, the fantastic setting of Imperial Japan, where you know there is quite a bit of supernatural activity occurring. So moving on to the red convertible by Louise Erdrich, we see that Erdrich establishes the convertible early on in the story, uh, almost within the first few pages, and the significance of the convertible is very clear. Erdrich uh, includes it and makes it the title object at, because it is a bonding point between Henry and Lyman because that was something that before Henry went off to the war, he looked after it, he worked with it, uh, with Lyman and he entrusted Lyman with it uh, before he went off and so we kind of see that as a center point for their relationship and so then when Henry comes home from the war Lyman doesn't understand how to connect with him anymore because of the psychological and emotional change that has occurred to Henry and so Lyman turns to this past this red convertible which he remembers as a center point for their previously very strong relationship and he tries to utilize that by you know damaging and breaking the car and trying to get Henry to reconnect in that sort of past life and so we see the red convertible almost carrying a certain characteristic of longevity and immortality, even though it is just this non-human element, this immortality of their relationship carried on. So it is more than just the physical. And we also see Erdrich utilizing these non-human elements to really dig at themes that we discussed before. So we mentioned before that there's a lot of familial connections centered uh, in the book, and we see the red convertible with that. And we also see it as a representative of a past which Lyman wants to return to, this past where he and his brother were strongly connected. Moving on to our next story, Reeling for the Empire by Karen Russell, we see that there are two main non-human factors. The first is the machine, and the second are the characteristics of the silkworm and the Keiko Joko. We see that the first factor, the machine, is an oppressive instrument used to control the women. The machine does this by essentially forcing the women to reel the silk from their fingertips for hours and hours on end. Uh, and if they don't do this, they will die. This really demonstrates the exploitation of 
the Kaigo Joko and the women uh, to the agent and the uh, empire's advantage. Uh, we see that this can be analyzed through multiple means, through Marxist imagery or rape imagery, as the woman is forced to do this uh, against her will, and it, essentially her rights are stolen from her. And so as we s can see, the machine is really a tool used by Russell to demonstrate oppression and further understand the point of the exploitation that the women are facing. And the second characteristic that we see is are these silkworm characteristics uh, of the Kaiko Joko. And this really demonstrates further exploitation of the women. Uh, as a result of drinking the tea, they no longer have control over their bodies as they grow silkworm-like characteristics, uh, including fur and eventually wings as they develop into silkworm moths. Uh, these changes are forced upon the women. They have no choice. Then they, there's no way to stop the process. So as a result, you can see this further exploitation and oppression of the women in the silkworm characteristics. To compare the two stories, uh, we can see that all of the non-human elements are more than just the physical elements that, they, that we can see. Uh, the red convertible, for example, represents the bond between Harry and Lyman, as Moritz earlier discussed. He, he points out that L Lyman does everything for Henry to try and bring him back to this place where he can be normal again by destroying the car and tries to help him regain some sense of normalcy because he loves his brother and wants to reignite that passion and family that w they once shared before Henry went off to the war. In addition, we can see that the silkworm characteristics carry a psychological weight in that the Kaiko Joko are scary. They don't look like women or humans at all. They have fur on their faces, and if anyone saw them, they'd probably be scared. There's, as a result, you can see that there's a clear divide between the agent and the other humans and the Kaiko Joko. And this brings it back to the whole idea of oppression. So as we can see, the non-human elements carry this psychological, mental, and emotional characteristic that transcends the physical nature of these objects. Uh, the second comparison point I want to talk about are the development of these non-human elements. So throughout the story of the Red Convertible, the Red Convertible is destroyed by Lyman, fixed by Henry, and then destroyed by Henry again as he crashes into the river. Um, but Despite the fact that this car is going through this constant uh, change from being destroyed to being fixed to being destroyed again, we see that Lyman and Henry's bond for each other grows and continues to grow up to the point when Henry dies. So as a result, we can see that the development of the non-human elements is directly tied to the development of the characters throughout the story. And there's a similar progression in the Reeling for the Empire story. As the women develop more silkworm characteristics, and as those characteristics increase, so to speak, over time, we see that they become more revolutionary, and they're more likely to stand up to their oppressors, because they hate the fact that they no longer have control over their bodies, and they hate the fact that they're being exploited and being forced to turn into essentially silkworms. So as a result, you can see over time, as they develop more and more characteristics of a silkworm, they become more and more revolutionary and eventually take a stand against the oppression they are facing from the agent. And really, I want to uh, contrast the stories here and talk about the idea that there's universe division. So in The Reeling for the Empire, we see the idea that the machine, the silkworm characteristics, essentially separate the humans from the Kaiko Joko. Uh, the oppression that is used against the women creates a dividing line between the women and the humans. It's clear, there's, you can see it. There's physical characteristics that demonstrate that the Kaiko Joko are no longer human. And there are also mental characteristics. They're, they are enslaved. They have that slave mindset. Um, and as a result, you can see that there's a clear divide between humans and the Kaiko Joko. However, in the Red Convertible, the red convertible is used to bring people together, is used to unify Henry and Lyman and bring back that sense of uh, family and community. 
And as a result, you can see that non-human elements are can be used for either uh, can be used for either goal to either unify characters or divide them. And as a result, uh, you can see that non-human elements can play a large role in them and different roles in every single story. So what we really want you guys to get from this presentation is that non-human elements aren't just uh, small things off the side or subplots. Uh, they can provide a different look at the story, a different perspective in ways that human characters can never hope to. Uh, they can provide a look into character growth and development and non-human, as a result, non-human elements can play a large role or a small role in any story, so it is extremely important to pay attention to their role. Thank you.